Hi, my name's Alicia. I am the Managing Director of PeopleBiz, and we are going to do a coaching session, a sample coaching session. Wendy, Alicia. what would you like coaching around today? That's a great question. I, <laughs> I didn't come in with any specific thing. Okay. Um, which is very strange for me because I usually have a long list. That's fine. That's fine. Just take a moment. Okay. Um, trying to think of what would be really valuable right now. Can I give you some prompters? Sure. Anything you're putting up with, trying to change, resisting or ignoring, anything you want to create or plan for, anything you want to strategize for, any place in which you feel stuck or unstopped, um, anything that you want to simply verbally articulate, because I know that you're also a verbal processor. Um, does that help? Yeah, I feel so um, accountable right now. <laughs> I feel like so in the flow with my jobs, and I, now I'm like, well, my jobs, my, my commitments, I should yeah. say. I feel like I'm... Maybe if I'm overlooking something, but, um, it could okay. Be a creating conversation. Yeah. I, I would like to maybe talk about, um, so one thing that has been coming up for me lately is that, um, there were a lot of things in my world that I was tolerating that I didn't realize because I wouldn't acknowledge them mm -hmm. as tolerations. Right. So, there were a lot of environmental things and, um, I totally, and I think that this might apply to the other places in my life, which is what I'm becoming aware of with the mm. environment ones. Mm. So noticing that we are, we are in the process of reformatting a lot of the spaces in our, in our home and realizing that for years and years, I never had a space of my own. Oh, like I was a roommate with just a bedroom or I never had an office or a gym. So I never felt like worthy of, or so now that I'm in creation mode with these spaces, I'm having to do back and forth work. And I'm realizing that I have probably have blinders on in all the other areas of my life where I'm creating new systems, new processes, new business goals, new everything. And I'm like, well, if I'm hitting all these like things with my house, what am I going to find out with everything else? Hmm. So I think maybe just making, you know, creating some awareness around that, okay. figuring out how to notice it. Okay. Because I truly was astonished when I started to let myself dream about all the spaces. Yeah. How much dialogue inside was like, oh, be grateful for what you have. Yeah. You know, playing no, small, playing no, small, playing small. Uh -huh. And I was like, no, what if it could be like this? And yeah. it wasn't that much more expensive or that labor intensive. And wow. so I want a garden tub and it's the hardest <laughs> thing for me to wrap my mind around all the health benefits. I know why I want it. It's not like crazy. I, I want to exercise more and soaking keeps me really in that pattern. So I know it's all really healthy, but that's here. Yeah. Like there's other parts where I'm getting blocked. So, okay. So you want to have a conversation around how to create even more awareness like what else is hidden from your view in terms of what you're tolerating? Yes. Okay. So I just want to stop and say something about tolerations. Tolerations is something that I discuss both in coaching and in our leading change series. When we're tolerating something, we're actually giving it attention without realizing it takes a lot of energy to ignore something or pretend like something isn't there. And when we remove a toleration, we have a burst of energy. It's often creative energy, or we feel more space. So think about a time when you procrastinated something, and then you take care of it, and you have like energy or freedom. That's what it feels like to remove tolerations, and so that's where that language is coming from. Okay, so let's first talk about what you've discovered. Okay, so now that you are redoing spaces. I can't wait to see what you've done. Now that you are reworking your spaces and you're recognizing that you kept settling, 
Can you say more about what that conversation was in your head? Yeah, like, sure. It was always about, you can't afford it. It's a bad time. Wait until this kid's older or this situation or that. So it was always just like, this is not a good time for you to have, you know, access to this, you know, space of your own or, or your, this little corner will do for now or Look at all the other things you've invested in that this is, it's not our good time. So that's yeah, what, okay. that's what it looks like. So it sounds like what you do is you actually see the possibility, but then you squash yourself. Yes. So you are seeing something. Always. As possible. Okay. So what do you want from this conversation? I want to be able to recognize when I start squashing because I don't just squash my own. I squash other people's. Oh, really? Tell me. Like my husband's like, okay, imagine what it would look like. And if I'm not in the right headspace, I'll just shut it down. I'll say, we can't afford that. Or it's not a good time. This will be the same answers I give myself. But I don't really think that's a very fair way to be with him or yeah. anybody for that matter. Yeah. Who am I to put a cap on what they're creating? Like, So I notice that it's not just me that's affected by that process. And I'm starting to see it, but I really want some, like some tools to catch it before it comes out of my mouth Yeah. to catch it before it becomes a part of my actions to really draw. Like I need to know how and when to pull it back and mm -hmm. stay in that creative space a little longer before yeah. I go making assumptions that may or may not be true. Okay. So what do you need from this conversation that would create that kind of awareness? Just maybe some tools, maybe okay. some tools and maybe some additional, you know, just, uh, mark, you know, just, you know, things that, that I can notice and go, Oh, okay. it's happening again. Or okay. Whatever. Okay. All right. Good. Oops. It's happening again. Maybe a tool. <laughs> yeah. That's a really good tool. Yeah. All right. So let's think beyond this issue for a moment. You're walking around in your life completely aware of what you want to create and have, and you're not squashing yourself anymore. What's happening? Oh, wow. I mean, everything is happening. Yeah? Yes. Um, well, yeah, my relationships are better my ability to produce is better. My energy levels are higher. My, um, endurance is there because I'm not shutting it down and, and booting it back up over and over again. Okay. You know, cause that's what happens is I'll catch it, but I'll be in a shutdown. Let's down. stay in that future for a second. Okay. Stay in that future. So you have energy, your relationships are better. Why? Well, because I'm not shutting them down either. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm able to really listen through their creative process and be a witness to that because oh, yeah. I think that's a part of what I'm maybe blocking, not just for myself, but for other people. Like maybe right. I'm, maybe my clients, maybe my husband, maybe my, you know, my teammates, maybe right. I'm not like fully being curious about it because okay. I'm shutting it down here first. And okay. so my curiosity won't continue. Okay. So um, I'm more curious. Mm -hmm. I'm able to really hold a space to entertain other people's visions and creative ideas before filtering through. Yeah. Got it. Whatever. All right. So this is no longer an issue. What else do you see? Um, well, I, I can see, I can see that there's just a lot more, of what, you know, just a lot more of what I want flowing my way because I'm actually able to complete these creative thoughts to mm -hmm. the, you know, to the end. So I'm able to say, Oh, that's a great idea. When am I going to put it on the calendar or how, how can, you know, like I will have more of a relationship with getting it done as opposed to being in a inner dialogue about it. So I'll be bringing life to more things. Yeah. I'll be experiencing obviously because of that more flow, more abundance, more money, more, more growth possibilities too, because I see that. Yeah. I can see it all. It's just, I'll yeah. censor it. Yeah. Yeah. And kill it. Yeah. 
and then have to reboot it because I'll be like, no, that's the wrong well. So I'm curious about something. This censoring that you do of yourself, how is that related to what you've already discovered about your barriers, like when you hit a wall? How is it related? Like if you think about other things that stop you or when you feel stopped, how is this related? I mean, it's the same. It's the same shutdown process and then reboot process. And then I might, you know, damage trust in the shutdown process with myself or with others because okay. I will shut it down, right? So it's related to, in the, historically speaking, I can yes. see how, you know, my husband's reluctant to share his ideas with me because okay. he's ready for me to shut him down. Or okay. I'm reluctant to put something on the calendar because I'm, okay, you know, yeah. I'm worried that, oh, okay. that's not possible. Okay, so this is the thing. This is definitely a thing. Yeah, it's not just a thing. It's the thing that has stopped you in the past. Yeah. So I was actually trying to relate this to other things you've shared that were barriers, but this is the barrier. Yeah, this is this is pretty much the mechanism that's in definitely in my biggest challenge. Mm -hmm. Is that as I peel back layers and yeah. start to create more. Yeah. And it, yes, it has a less of a hold on me, but it's still yeah. active. It's got to see the table. Why did you need this at one time? Hmm. I'm, I'm sure it had more to do with, um, some assurance of like, I, I think that in, in my industry and in the past, there have been so many things that have changed in the industry itself that kind of have knocked artists down, creatives down. So, Maybe it was just a way to avoid being disappointed by the world around me. <laughs> and a way to survive the music industry. I mean, play it smaller, be a little bit more stealth, don't yeah. involve that many people. The yeah. more people and money you spend. I get it. Yeah, yeah, the more people you bring on, the more money you spend. Yeah. The bigger risk it is. Where's the return on investment in here? Yeah. It's not I gonna work. It. Go oh, smaller, I go it. deeper. Okay. You know, that's I get it. That's where it's worked. Yeah. And it actually has helped me navigate some really crazy things that, you know, other artists got bitter about and maybe I just shut it down soon enough or shifted gear okay. soon enough that I could okay. stay afloat. Okay. And why do you no longer need it now? Because I totally don't give a crap about the industry. <laughs> that actually it, is a wonderful place to create from. It is. Yeah. And I just don't, I'm not interested in the state of the industry anymore. I'm interested in creating powerful experiences for people. Yeah. And it's the people I'm interested in. It's not the industry. Oh, and I awesome. think I had to filter it through the industry for some validation or for some street cred. I don't care about that anymore. Yes. And I finally have admitted it. Like, yeah. don't care. Yeah. And so I don't need those things anymore because it's not there are no barriers. I can create whatever I want. Any artist can create whatever they want in the music industry because all of that is just fake anyway. <laughs> that is wonderful, Wendy. But it's, it's okay. true, but I'm still working from some kind of shutdown construct. Right. Maybe. Maybe. Because you sound really ready to let this go. Yeah. Okay. So let's walk around in your life and see what we can discover. Okay. Okay. So you're, right now you're looking at environment. What, where else do you think you could look? Well, I'm, I'm looking in all the, all the areas and I'm actually not overwhelmed, which is a really cool feeling because I'm, I'm kind of excited because I see it in environment. I, my health, it, you know, I'm definitely getting out of my own way there. I'm definitely like, I made up excuses about why I couldn't practice yoga and then when I realized it wasn't going to happen at home because of the real situation, which is a dog or a child climbing on me, I just decided <laughs> to start going early yeah. in the morning to a class. Yeah. 
and it's all better now. Yeah. Like I just found a new path and that felt great. And I bought a stationary spin bike because I didn't want to use the weather as an excuse. So I'm doing it. Yeah. I know you're doing it. Where are you not looking? I'm probably not looking in terms of like long term visioning for my businesses. Cause that's the place where I felt like if I got my health and my environment cleaned up, True. then I could have a better headspace for those. Cause those are the ones where I'm most, I'm so green. I know you're addressing your environment and your exercise and health. And I probably a lot of other things I'm not aware of. Like where else should we look? I think the biggest area to look is in the long-term business strategy because that's where I do a lot of math and then shut myself down going, that's a lot of money. You can't make that much money, you know? So even though I've done the math, even yes. though I've really sort of line itemed out the phases of mm -hmm. growth, mm -hmm. I'm just blocking it. I'm mm -hmm. censoring it. And because of that, I'm not setting the goal to market tomorrow to reach the five-year goal. You know, it's right. like not, I have to see this to start the tomorrow thing. Right. And that, it's okay. blocking my vision for that. Right. And so that's where I want to focus on building those tools because that's where it's. Okay. So you have the plan though. I do. Okay. I, it's, but, yeah. And, but you're not engaged with it. I'm not. Okay. What did you let go of to get engaged with your environment? I think I just m moved into a state of what if and playfulness from a state of this is okay, be grateful. So okay. I don't know if there was an exact thing I let go of other than just you let go of a belief that I wasn't yeah. worthy of okay. a great little home studio and yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let go of something about why you couldn't have it. Yeah. Okay. And the shift is from telling yourself to just be grateful to what if. Yeah. Okay. So should we play a little what if in the business? Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what if you're able to step through that entire five-year plan you have? Oh my gosh. That would be amazing. I would be doing really good work in the world on a few different levels and like impacting people's lives in meaningful ways beyond my reach now. Okay. Yeah. Stay there. And, and so you are impacting people beyond your reach. What do you actually see? I see opportunities to speak opportunities to facilitate opportunities to train other facilitators, to go out and do the work we're doing. I see opportunities to, um, to do some really creative, um, artistic stuff on, you know, as well. Mm -hmm. And I also see the opportunity to have really cool quality, unique experiences with my family as a result. Okay. You know, and, and I also can see how it would bridge a, a sort of a money gap that my brain, like I can see how, Oh, okay. We have successfully, you know, gotten past you know, gotten to a, a certain amount of savings or retirement or education yeah. for my kid. I can see Go ahead how. Go save the amount. Um, what's your business Five years? Doing? Yeah. What's your five business years. doing? How big is your team? What is your, right. what, what's your income? What's your savings? Five years. I have to, we have to get out the calculator, but. No, you don't. Um, <laughs> Well, cause I always do it to the, like, oh, how much can we produce in a year? Like, but I feel like the ballpark at that point was, you know, between 300 and a half million dollars. Okay. Like, 
Uh, oh, wait. No, that was year one. Oh, I felt like year one was <laughs> 200,000. Okay, five years. Five years. Okay, best five years ever. Best five years ever. What's your company doing in revenue? So we have a few different lead facilitators who can go out and do the work. Um, that means that we can be doing multiple jobs a month, um, even with custom, custom jobs. Okay. Um, okay. so that if they're buying the, if they're buying the experience package, it's, you know, five to $7,000. If they're buying the fully produced, it's more in like in the $20,000 range. So that really yeah. opens up a lot of financial possibilities. Yes, there's overhead, but yeah. there's still a, a really nice gross, you yeah. know, from the net. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if you're doing five to 20 experiences with three facilitators in a month. <laughs> That's where my brain just goes. <laughs> can I lead that? Yes, yeah. I think I can lead that. Yeah. And I have a lot of things I have to like, let go of and train over time, but five years seems short. I mean, I had a baby almost five years ago and it feels really short, <laughs> but also a lot has happened in that five years. So sure. who am I to say that's not possible? Right. Right. So I want you to think about what really keeps that alive for you in the way that, because you've managed to keep it alive now with your health and with your environment, what keeps that alive? I think the fact that it's a really tangible way to practice healing arts through music in the professional world mm. and the idea of using both of those skill sets for me and really employing them toward people who probably need it the most, yeah. but who also have a really high impact on the culture yes. of our world. So not just working on, on their, their organizational culture, but the idea that if you can influence cultural change from a, a heart place, then you can influence cultural change. Yes. From a heart place. Right. Right. Like that is the goal. The goal is not just to write songs that touch people. It's to help people access those parts of themselves. And so that's what keeps me going is the fact that I know that even if it works at a 10% level, they're still walking away. It's like a, it's like a okay yoga class. If somebody walks away from a, pretty okay yoga class feeling better than they did before. Hey, imagine what's possible whenever they have a really great yoga class. Yeah, okay. I feel that way about the music experience and, right. and the creative experience for these people who don't consider themselves creatives. You are night and day different at this moment. Like you really got in touch with why you're doing this and what's possible. It's beautiful. And what do you have to put in place in your life to keep that alive every moment of every day, every week when you're planning, month, year, etc. I probably just need to be seeking out opportunities to create evidence of that. <laughs> okay. So if you are regularly looking for opportunities, tell me what that means. It means I'm marketing. Okay. I'm networking. I'm actually showing up and talking to other people about this vision. Okay. And, and I'm continuing to speak and be a guest on podcasts that are entrepreneur focused and yes, or maybe even more than entrepreneur focused. Oh yeah. Cause I don't think this is necessarily only it's no. Yeah. Anyway. Yes. It's speaking. It's saying yes to every platform that invites me okay. in, at this moment, because yeah. I, I definitely feel like every time I do that, people go, I've never thought of marketing and branding that way. And I'm like, well, all the science is there to back it up and all the human experience is there to back it up. So okay, it's exciting for me and it propels me to do the next thing. I think what I hear you saying is you need to keep talking about it. And doing it. Okay. Actually doing the work. What's your strategy for making sure that strategy ends up in your calendar? Hmm. Saying yes. Okay. Got it. Not putting off when people ask me to be on their shows. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, what else are you going to not do? Censor that. Okay. Um, make excuses for why it's not a good time. Okay. Um, because that's been what I've been doing. Okay. I, yeah, I just got that. Wendy. <laughs> All right. So I know you have opportunities and you're going to now start saying yes to those and knowing it's the right time. I'm wondering if that's enough to keep you from forgetting, right? Like you could easily go and forget this. So what are you going to put into your life that does not allow you to forget this this commitment, this. Okay. So here's something I've thought about. I want to make, revisit my list of, um, I really want to revisit my list of, of people who I know are, you know, influencers and connected and wonderful who also believe in me no matter what I'm doing and make some requests of each of them to, just think about, or, you know, just yeah. share with what I, them what I'm working on, a, an updated version of it. Okay. And I could put, you know, one a week on the calendar and that okay. would probably make me feel. Okay. So we're going to keep one big request. Notice how I added the big. We're going to keep one big request in your calendar every week. Did we get to what you wanted to get to in this conversation? Yes. Yeah. We yeah. Got there? Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Ah! Thank you. <laughs> okay. I look forward to big things. Thanks, Alicia. Mm-hmm. <laughs>